Hey, welcome back to the show. Today I want to speak about something. And first of all, I want you to understand, I read someone on Twitter say, this is not the airport. You don't have to announce your uh, you know, takeoffs. So if you are not into understanding the wanting to know the reasons why of this video, just skip ahead, it's fine. This is a video where I want to explain my personal interaction with the formats that we're going to be talking about and why I've decided to do what I probably will be doing uh, soon. That being said, basically, I have come to the conclusion that my time shooting large format film is extremely limited. And when I mean extremely limited, it's I don't really make time for it. Um, so I've decided to pick my battles and stick to as little um, options as possible in a way to try to make myself shoot some more. And what do I mean by that? That means that I have probably almost a dozen 4x5 cameras. The reason for that is many. Uh, one is because I am a hoarder. The second of it is because sometimes brands give me uh, cameras to review and then I can keep them. Uh, I have Intrepids, I have Stenobakas, I have some um, camera dactyl cameras, I bought myself travel wide cameras, I have the Chamonix cameras, I have multiple cameras, I have a CNR 4x5, stuff like that. Actually, let me take away this plant out of there. Uh, so you can see the CNR in its weird uh, arrangement. And there's a reason for this arrangement, okay, I'll explain why. Um, so I've decided to uh, step away from 4x5 by limiting my options. Basically, I will probably sell all my 4x5 cameras and not have any options. I might keep a lens or two for 4x5 for one specific reason, and that is I will probably continue making reviews every now and then if manufacturers want to send me a camera. I probably won't take the cameras as a gift to donation, payment, whatever that could be but I'll rather probably give it back to them or give it away on the channel because I do not want to, in uh, principle, own 4x5 because I don't want to be shooting 4x5. That reason is a matter of, like I said, time and energy towards shooting. Shooting 4x5 is amazing. I love the format. I love architecture. I have been tailoring for a collection of architecture lenses for years. I had a 90XL, I had the 72XL from Schneider. I had so many lenses that I recently sold. And that is because I am gonna concentrate on eight by 10. Eight by 10 is a monster of its own. It's a beast. It's a format that is complicated, cumbersome, expensive, heavy, all the bad things you could, but there's one great benefit. And that is the sheer size of the negative you get or positive, and the ease of use in the ground glass. Sometimes when you're shooting large format, you forget that bigger in the ground glass is sometimes better, or I would say it's always better. I have an 11 by 14 also, that's probably also gonna go. Um, but once you have a bigger format, it's much easier to see those micro adjustments, micro focus, uh, corrections, and so on. And then it gives you a negative or a positive, in my case, negative, which I can contact print. And I love the beauty of contact printing. There is, I do own a eight by 10 enlarger. I could enlarge eight by 10, but I most probably won't do that because enlarging eight by 10 and having a clean glass for eight by 10 is impossible. And that requires a ton of spotting. And that's something I don't have so much time or energy to do. So my thoughts are gonna be, I'm gonna be getting rid of four by five, and that will be now something of the past for me. And I will be embracing eight by 10. If you wanna know what kind of cameras I'm gonna own, I'm gonna own this CNR Frankenstein I have here and a Chamonix. The Chamonix is probably gonna be my go-to for normal photography. And this uh, you know, camera is gonna stay as my product studio photography. I have two very different kind of photography I wanna do with this format. And one is gonna be a project that I will try to keep offline as much as possible until I'm done. And then there's gonna be just my normal family picture taking documenting. The thing is, out of all my favorite photographers in, uh, in general, and I don't talk about art or photography as an art in this channel at all, because I don't think I'm very good at it and I probably wouldn't know what to say, but some of my favorite authors and photographers are all shooting eight by 10 black and white film. It can be Sally Mann, Nicholas Nixon. It can be, uh, I can't even think right now. 
there's uh, Marco from Chicago. I, I will have to find his YouTube channel. I mean, his Instagram handle. But there's multiple photographers that I really, really admire that shoot 8x10. And I've seen exhibits with contact prints of 8x10 and believe, like, trust me, it's amazing. And I'm very happy with that. And for that reason, I've decided to limit my options. I will have probably two to three, maybe maximum four lenses for 8x10, but I will most probably always live with one. I'm considering the 8x10 and 240 millimeter focal length because they can be 5.6 lenses that you can actually, it's kind of like a 35-ish on a camera, which is what I shoot like on Leica. And uh, 6x7, I shoot like 100 mil, which is around also similar. Um, well, actually a little longer because I do portraits mostly with that. But yeah, it's it's just, I don't have the time. I don't make the time to shoot. But when I shoot, I want to shoot something I really am pleased with in all senses. And 4x5, I've always felt has been an amazing format and it's so good. But 8x10 is just a fraction uh, more annoying, well, actually quite more annoying, but it really renders results very differently. I really like it. So I'll be picking up basically 8x10, shooting more of that. Uh, one thing you could think of is the cost. The sheet of 4x5 is around a dollar, let's say, or a euro, and uh, now they're the same thing. And an 8x10 is a lot more. The thing is, like I said, I shoot very little. So to me, shooting one sheet a week of 8x10 is totally doable. I spend that much money on having a drink with co-workers after work a week. So shooting one sheet would be fine. That would be four sheets a month. That would be 52 a year, two boxes of HP5, which is and you know something I can absorb and I can do with my current um, you know work and money situation. But those will be so much more thought out. I will try to sit down and really focus on what I'm shooting and why I'm shooting and compo composing for that shot. And that is something I'm certainly excited. Will I still have time to shoot 8x10? Probably not always, but I will try to make that effort of weekly loading a couple film holders and weekly trying to develop those film holders because I've shot them. And that is what I want to try to do. This is kind of like when you want to start getting to gym, which I also need, um, and you try to just go for a walk every day or go to gym every day and do five minutes of something. Well, this is going to be my gym. It's going to be trying to shoot 8 by 10 on a weekly basis, even if it's very simple topics and very just to keep the muscle running, but just being creative and trying to use it. 4x5 has been amazing, but I find it way too distracting because like I literally had almost 40 lenses for large format, okay? And like I said, like a dozen cameras. So it just became a problem of choosing. What do I shoot? Architecture, lifestyle, uh, do I shoot technical, point and shoot? Do I shoot macro? Do I shoot wide? Do I shoot long? Uh, do I shoot color, black and white? Do I push, do I not? Do I shoot roll film? It just became a nightmare for me. And I've decided to simplify as much as possible in multiple facets of my photography. And I just wanted to explain why here on the channel, because I think some people might relate or might not relate. But for those who are interested, that's what I'm going to be doing. And you'll see this 150 and this mega rail. It actually goes back all the way here. You can't barely see it. This is a setup for one kind of photography I'm doing. I literally have a 150, which obviously is a 4x5 lens. This covers actually, it's a Claron, G Claron. It covers like 5x7, but I'm shooting it 8x10 because I'm doing extreme macros. And that's something that totally is off my comfort zone, but I'm really excited to learn. One of the things that I find interesting of photography and film photography specifically is you can always learn something new. And that continuous learning you know, path is what keeps me hooked to it. So once I know something, I usually use it. But once I don't know something, I really want to learn how to do it. And that is one of them things. Another one is sitting here, but that's a different topic for a different video. So yeah, that's why I wanted to explain why I will be probably dropping my 4x5 stuff. I will be keeping a couple things just for the sake of the channel and making videos every now and then. But you won't see so much 4x5 from me. You might be seeing 8x10 from me. That also will mean that if I do prints, there'll be contact prints and people purchasing will get contact prints from that work. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know, do you think, do you find it hard to shoot anything at all? Do you find it hard to shoot 4x5? Do you find it hard to shoot 8x10? 
And I know the format is extremely expensive and the barrier to entry is pretty high. But I think nowadays with options like Intrepid and others, you can actually shoot 8x10 for, you know, a modest amount. So yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll leave a link to my Patreon, PayPal, if you feel like helping the channel to continue doing some weird investigations of formats and films and, uh, you know, methods of photography, I'd be very grateful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.